Hello and welcome to Jamie's Motion Graphics, episode 16. Today we are making this. All of this has been made in After Effects and all of this has been made from scratch. I will show you step by step how you can make it yourself. Okay, here we are in After Effects. We are going to start off with a new composition as always. It is going to be something different than we normally do. Because we're going to make it into a square composition. 720 by 720. You can make it even bigger if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to set this to just a bunch. I think 12 seconds will be enough. Uh, we only need about 3. So anything over that, well, you need a little bit more because you're going to do some effects and you don't want them to run out of space, basically. So we're going to start off with, um, yeah, straight off a background layer. Um, I'm not sure if I will use this background layer, but uh, for now we'll just keep it there. And we're going to just duplicate it and change the color. Well, we don't actually need the color. We need to change the name, though. So this is going to be our background. And then this is going to be uh, our first effect. So we're going to immediately throw in an effect. We don't really need to do anything else for now. So we're going to throw in Vegas. It, uh, it can be uh, found in the top bar here as well. Uh, let's call this, I don't know, lines. There you go. So the Vegas effect is kind of interesting. It, um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, I'll just show you. I can't even explain what it does. So we're going to start off with um, an ellipse tool here. We're going to just double click it. Then you get uh, the, so the ellipse tool you can find by just clicking on this and then selecting it. And then double clicking will make it the comp size and that's why we need a square comp. Um, the mask itself is going to be uh, kind of the, the path for this Vegas effect. So we're going to uh, draw it down a little bit. I don't know how to uh, how to make this smaller. So we're just going to work with it as it is. And that is just the way it is. I guess I do have to uh, have to tune it down. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I'm just going to uh, draw it on like this. Then hold Ctrl Alt Shift and you will be able to do this. Um, I have to make it smaller than the comp size, I just realized, because otherwise, yeah, we get into some mess and that is not good. So uh, let's see if it's actually centered. It seems about right. It needs to go a little bit to the right. So um, let's uh, move it a little bit to the right. And that should be it. So this is, um, uh, this can be found over here. Title, action, save. It uh, gives you the mid of the of the comp, which is kind of useful sometimes. So um, this mask is not going to be an additive mask. It's going to be none, in fact. And we're going to set this one to mask path and then the path actually to mask one. So once we've done all that, we're going to turn off the mask because we no longer need it. We no longer need to see it. We're going to turn the color to white and there you can see the uh, the Vegas effect. Let me, uh, it's currently at 32, that's way too high. We're going to start off with four and there you can see what it actually does. Um, I'll explain it in a moment. I'll first uh, show you a little bit more on what it actually is. There you go. Let's uh, let's start with this one. The hardness of one is a little bit too much, I think. Um, yeah, let's tune it down to a little bit less. So it makes these lines that fade out and they appear to be rotating. Currently they're not rotating, as you can see. But, uh, well, we can rotate them, of course. And you can set the total length that is, so I have four segments, as you already saw, let me change that. Um, the, to the total length that is uh, occupied by these stripes is this one. So one is the total length, and then if you change it, you can make different things. And obviously we're going to use that. For now we're going to uh, put this at, uh, yeah, just about this. Just do it what you think is, uh, is pretty. And the rotation, we're going to use that because we're going to use multiple of these layers and we want to offset them so that it's not like one line of every start of every thingy. Um, yeah, the width I've already shown you, uh, making it bigger or smaller results in uh, kind of a different look as well. So this is our main effect and we are going to 
copy this once we are done with the layer. First of all, we're going to put in an expression for the rotation. So alt click on the stopwatch and you get this and we're going to say uh, minus 150 times time. So minus because we wanted to rotate left because the Vegas effect is left at the moment and I don't want to switch that. It doesn't really matter for us. And as you will see, now it just has a constant rotation. And you can also see that it's not actually centered. So that is my bad. Um, I'm going to have to center it a little bit better, I guess. And I will be right back. Okay, and we are back. Um, I centered the, the, the mass path by hitting the shape button. Typing it uh, as 160 to 560, which means it, uh, it centers in the middle, which is the 360 mark. And then uh, doing that for both dimensions because it is a square. And then uh, hitting the reset to ellipse just for the fun of it. And then you get this. Plus I had to redo the Vegas effect after I centered the mask. I don't know why it didn't copy the mask into this, but it didn't. So I had to redo the Vegas effect as well. Uh, that's why it may have slightly different values, but the look is overall quite the same. So um, yeah, currently it does have perfect rotation, which is what we want because it would look really off if it didn't. So now we're going to uh, uh, copy it a couple of times, or rather duplicate it. That is edit, duplicate, there you can see it, control D. I'm going to use control D from now on. And um, yeah, it, they're going to be numbered, it's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale some of them. Um, yeah, set them to screen by the way. Uh, Hang on, this should be set to screen. I should have done that straight away, of course. Uh, screen kind of makes that, yeah, the layer, what is black is see-through, which is kind of useful. So we're going to put one uh, just inside of this, and here you can see why you want to rotate them, because otherwise they line up, all of them, and that is not very pretty. So we're going to make uh, eight of them, and we're going to rotate it a little bit. There you go. It will have the same rotation speed. If you want to change that, you have to hit R and change the, uh, well, Alt click this. Oh, no, you don't have to Alt click it. Just click it. And um, yeah, just change the, uh, the expression. I'm going to make them rotate the same amount, all of them. Uh, if you don't like that, then feel free to change it, of course, because, well, it's your design. Well, actually, it's not your design, but your it's your production of the design. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, that being said, we're going to just do this again and again until we have enough of them to, oh, hang on, I'm going to change the width as well. Just make them a little bit smaller. No, that didn't really do a whole lot. I don't know why. Oh, there's a second one on top of it, Never mind. So let me first see what's going on with this one. So yeah, I want them to be a little bit smaller than the, the outer ones, maybe scale them up a little bit more so that they are a little closer. And then we're going to make another one, Control D, duplicate, and we're going to pull this one out a little bit. So scale, pull it outside, no, 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 I don't want it outside, I, I have another plan for the outside. And we're, we'll see that in a moment, uh, let's make uh, two of them, let's make them nice and big. So that they fill up a little bit more of the screen. Uh, where's my width? There it is. And uh, yeah, you should be doing this with black and white. And I will show you in a moment in a moment why. Um, yeah, rotate it a little bit because it would look weird otherwise. Yeah, that seems about right. Uh, maybe even a little wider. Yeah, maybe a little bit less scaling. So yeah, just uh, just see what you can do with it. Uh, the inner part, I'm going to leave a ring open, uh, or, well, a little gap at least, and um, then continue on inside of it. That's why I will be doing well, this. So that's my gap that I'm leaving open. You will see in a moment why. Uh, yeah, lots of uh, planning into this one, so I, I, I can actually say that I know what I'm doing this time. Well, at least partially. Mm. I'm trying, I'm trying. Um, so yeah, just play with whatever you want, except for the color, you can change everything because the color is going to be used uh, later on. Um, yeah, let's make another one in the middle, uh, just one more, and then the middle is going to be reserved for something else. 
Uh, let's scale it down a little bit and make it even smaller when it comes to the width. So just tiny bit of um, of line there still. Um, let's make it. Which one do we not have? We have. Um, yeah, we should have a lot. Let's do twelve. Yeah, that's that. That looks about right. So first of all. We're going to do the outsides, and that is going to be uh, another copy of this, so that is not a problem. Uh, let me close all of this. So it's going to be another Vegas effect for now. Uh, we're going to scale it up until it's uh, all the way on the outside. And we're going to turn up the width by quite a bit until we have something like this. And then let's say that we want two segments, something like that. Let's. Uh, pull up the hardness a little bit because well it uh, kind of fades out if you uh, give the if you make them bigger it kind of fades out the edges and it becomes very blurry and I like it to be very sharp well not like super duper sharp but um, well sharper than it was um, rotating a little bit so it doesn't interfere with that one actually rotating a little bit more I guess um, yeah something like that that's okay. Okay, now we're going to uh, insert another layer and we can just duplicate this one. Remove the Vegas effect and we're going to use another effect called Stroke. And Stroke is over here. It's also under Generate in your effects. And Stroke is going to allow us to change this, this um, previous layer that we made. So we're going to pull the brush size up to a well, a decent amount, bigger than the one that we had, and then we're going to set the spacing to, well, let's say 100%, well, close to 100%. Can't actually see what's going on, so I'm turning off the last layer that we made. Um, yeah, so your brush size has to be big, and then your opa or sorry, not opacity, your spacing has to be big as well. But you can see here what's happening. You're basically making balls here, but they have to fit exactly. So if you're having trouble finding the exact one, hold uh, control. Hang on. Hold control uh, once you're close to what you want. So let's say I'm here, I'm close to what I want. And then I can use control to find the exact spot where this new ball comes in. Which is... Come on. You know you want to, which is this. So now we can't see where it actually started, which is exactly what we want. So the way this works is we're going to, hang on, I don't know which one is supposed to be on top. I think it's supposed to be like this. And then this is going to be the Luma Moth. Yeah, there you go. So um, what this does is it takes the layer underneath it, or sorry, above it, and it uses that for what it can draw. So basically the, uh, the dots are everything that's drawable and then the Vegas effect just shows what's underneath it. And by doing so, I actually create kind of a nice effect. So now you can uh, change the Vegas effect to actually show something different. So um, it's the top layer from the two. And now you can uh, do the width, for example, a little bit less if you want more square. Uh, things and you can do it a little bit bigger if you don't mind the rounding off of the edges uh, I'm going to put it like this that seems right and then we're going to turn up uh, the rotation a little bit until we have uh, well an actual yeah there you can see it the actual end of the block because it's going to rotate with that uh, so the end of the block will always be visible and if there's like a half a block it's going to be ugly so just change the rotation until you have that so as I said you can change the rotation speed on things if you were if you're like well I want one thing to rotate a little bit uh, faster okay I'll, I'll do that I said I wouldn't do that but um, yeah well change my mind Minus 250 times time. It's not that hard to understand how this all works. Uh, so now it rotates faster than the rest. And uh, it's only slight, but uh, you will notice it. And by, by making different rotation speeds, yeah, now you can see that it actually creeps up as well. 
So maybe I should set the same expression here. Copy this uh, and make it over here as well. So you can actually click on the triangle and then you go to this. And yeah. Anyhow, this should be better now. So yeah, now it actually rotates without moving the balls. But yeah, you can see if you rotate the balls in uh, on a different speed that you can actually use that as well. So if you say like, yeah, I want these um, these things to stand still and the, the effect to move over them, that's perfectly fine as well. You can just say, okay, just delete this and then it will stand still. It's all up to you what effect that you want. You just have to understand what's happening in the effect and then you can change it however you like. Um, apparently I undid a little bit too much there. Well, we'll just retype it, I guess. Um, minus 250 times time. And then for this one, the same. Because I want it to rotate uh, as, a, as a complete unit. But yeah, it's all up to you. By the way, don't use return, use, or don't lose enter, use the return key next to your uh, keypad, numpad. And that one will actually uh, allow you to do it. So let's now fill in the, the middle first. And I'm going to do that in a different comp because uh, it's kind of messy. Uh, first, we're, no, first, we're going to do a new layer. Um, let's say solid, and it's going to be gray. So yeah, gray solid, very easy. Um, we're going to pick up the ellipse tool once again. We're going to just stand in the middle and once again, control alt shift. And there you go. Just drag it out until you have, you just about reach the, the first line. You can get it as close as you want to because it will look better if it's closer. Anyway, we're going to have this mask. We're going to duplicate it. So select it, control D and we're going to subtract it. So nothing will be remaining. And then we're going to go into the second mask, the subtract mask, and put the expansion to uh, a few dots. Well, actually, we shouldn't do that on this one. Hang on. Yeah, this is why it becomes kind of a mess. Uh, I'm going to first make from this one. Now that we have the size, I'm going to do layer precompose and move all the attributes, blah, blah, blah. And we're going to rename it. Hang on, it's called gray solids. So um, rename it to, uh, yeah, you could have done that earlier, but I kind of mid thing. I kind of messed it up. So yeah, there's that. Uh, so this is the gray underground. Uh, we're going to duplicate this one without the ma with only the one mask on it. And now we're going to copy the mask or duplicate the mask, set it to subtract the way I said it. And we're going to um, do exactly what I did last time. The mask expansion is going to be lowered a little bit. Uh, we can't actually see it. So because, well, this one has to be a different color. That was kind of the, the point of it. We're going to make it white and it's going to be kind of the reflection. And yes, it looks terrible right now. Just hit M if you want to be quicker about it. Um, so yeah, the expansion is going to be minus a few. It doesn't have to be too many. I have minus four here. And the feather, yeah, you can feather it out quite a bit. Um, we'll paint over it after this, so I have 14 pixels here. I'm going to put a few pixels of um, uh, of feather on the other side, otherwise it becomes a very harsh line, and we don't want that. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do here is we're going to um, create a reflection like this would be a ball, and the edge that we just did kind of makes it a little more interesting. But we're going to do the same thing in the, well, not the same thing. We're going to do a similar thing in the middle. Uh, but then without mask one, well, I guess we can keep mask one. It doesn't really matter. Um, the expansion is going to be way better. And then the, we are going to feather it out. Oh, hang on. We do need to delete mask one, I guess. No, we can't. 
Um, so how did I do this then? Uh, I guess I took mask one. That's that's what I'm assuming. So mask expansion on yeah, this is what I did. So mask expansion on mask one is going to be almost well until nothing remains, and then you're going to feather it out until it looks something like that. it needs to be a little bit bigger. So um, yeah, something like that. Uh, so now it from a distance it will look like a sphere, like the light is hitting here, and then well we have this thing on the edge. Um, the thing on the edge is not really what I wanted yet, so just play around with it a little bit. Um, just until you are satisfied that it looks the way you want it. You don't have to do the thing on the edge. Uh, it's just that it looks kind of more convincing than um, if it's not there. So yeah, let's do minus two pixels then and feather it out a little bit more. Yeah, the feather doesn't work like I would like it to work, but here it's still workable. So um, yeah, currently this is about right. Maybe we can make it a little bit darker gray, the gray solid. So just go to the solid settings and just pick a darker color. So that the effect is a little more noticeable. So the, the difference between where it's actually masked and where it's not. So you can do several more things. Um, let's, for example, do... The, the ring, that's this one, so yeah, let's let's rename it for a moment. So this is a ring because it has two, uh, two masks that get subtracted, and then this is the uh, mid reflection. Um, yeah, okay, so we're going to duplicate the ring. Uh, it doesn't matter in which order these things are because they don't actually overlap. We're going to scale the, the whole layer and we're going to say like, okay, let's put it over here and make this into a more interesting, uh, well, ring shape, well, the, the edge, make it a little more interesting and a little bit more. So yeah, you can make whatever you want. So this kind of becomes a little more of a weird shape now, 3D wise. Of course, it's not a 3D shape, but it appears to be, so that's good. Uh, hit M and then um, feather out your masks, I guess, or hit F, that would be even better. Feather out your mask a little bit differently because, well, it kind of looks weird otherwise. If you have two of the same layers. Um, oh, turn off the mask, that would be good. So yeah, currently I'm going to leave like a little bit of a ring here. It now looks as though this part is um, is a ball, and this part is flat with a little ridge in it. You can make whatever you want. Anyway, we're going to take this mid thing now and plop it in here. Oh, it's already in there. Never mind. So it's already in here. It fills the middle. It's kind of a nice addition, and we're going to, by the way, save because we don't want to lose everything if it crashes. Although, I have to say, After Effects is one of the few programs that has never crashed on me, which is kind of amazing. But yeah, well, that's good. Now we're going to fill this with some nice uh, some nice stuff. I think I should have put it a little bit outwards, but we can shift the layers afterwards. It will be fine. So we're going to create uh, a new composition, and this one is uh, kind of, well, let's call it tricky. Uh, we're going to make this, so our total comp is going to be 1280 by 720. We want one fourth of that. You can also take one sixth or one twelfth or whatever you want. Uh, just make sure it's a, well, it's an actual number. And well, divided by four, obviously it's 320. Um, oh, that was not what I wanted to do. Composition settings. So we want it to be square. So 320 by 320. Um, we're going to start with uh, just a new layer, new solid. It's going to be white because, as I said, everything has to be white or black. Our mid part is gray, but that's, yeah, between white and black, so that can help as well. We're going to just hit, uh, or, well, get this one, duplicate it. Uh, do we actually need to? Yeah, we're going to duplicate. And then change the... You can do this in several ways, that's why I was wondering. I'm going to make this one black, and we're going to put a mask on it, and that mask is going to be a rectangle, 
and it's uh, we, we're just going to double click it so it's the complete size now we're going to do the same trick that we did before um, actually I think I need two masks for that, this so uh, this one is no I don't never mind I only need one uh, it needs to be a subtract mask and we're going to put it inwards and then you can see that the line actually appears and we're going to feather it out of course just like with the other one so make sure you have something like this so a look that kind of shows the fade it um, it doesn't have to be very fancy it just has to look something like this okay now we're going to make a new composition this is going to be really lame but well 320 by 320 once again we're going to put comp 2 into comp 3 and all we're going to do is scale it a little bit so that it's uh, let's say 90 percent um, it's still very sharp so if you want to change that you can feather it out if you want to I like it sharp but if you don't then well this is your place to do it so yeah as I said this is all we're going to do we're going to make a new composition this one is going to be 1280 by 720 so this is your normal comp size uh, if you have a different comp size you need to read uh, or do the other things differently as well and we need this this preciseness let's call it because of well one reason we need to fit in four of them so first of all we're going to uh, put in four of these and then we're going to hit the align tool so go to window align and then for me it's underneath here and because I have CS4 I believe I have CS4 yeah uh, for me it says align layers but it doesn't say what it aligns itself to so for the newer versions it says uh, to comp here and that is what you want so I am going to have to do it a little bit differently I'm going to have to put in a new solid, make it black, and then align to the solid, which is kind of stupid, but that's the way it is. So we're going to align these two. Uh, normally you only have to do the one. Uh, we're going to align it to the left, and then I'm going to select these two, and I'm going to align it to the right, and then I'm going to get all of these and center it like that. So now they're equidistant from each other, plus this is only like half the gap that this gap would be. So if I would wrap them around, it would become perfectly, uh, well, it would become perfect basically. So align one to the left, align one to the right, and then select this, this mid button here, the horizontal center, center distribution, which will align all of them. Uh, it's really easy uh, as I said for CS4 and lower you have to use a black solid for it you can turn it off we don't really need it anymore although no, I, can, I can just keep it on and now we're going to make another composition and this one is going to be called um, oh, light panel rounds Let's make it a capital P. So it's at 1280 by 720. It doesn't really matter what size it is. I guess we should make it 720 by 720. And we're going to hit the OK button. We're going to put the comp 4 into that. So the one we just made. And then we're going to add uh, polar coordinates to it. So polar coordinates will transform the... I'll, I'll show you what it does. Uh, yeah that doesn't mean anything to most people it will uh, transform like X and Y to uh, a thing that goes from the middle outwards so the top part is the middle in after we do this so the top part is going to be is black here so the middle is going to be black up until halfway and then it's going to turn into this white crap and then it's going to turn back black so it's going to look like from outside in you're going to have black white black and so if we do that we want from rectangular to polar and then set it to 100 percent and there you have it black white black and this distribution is very useful for us at the moment because uh, obviously we wanted something round but well sculpting something round is really hard whereas sculpting something rectangular is really easy 
So um, yeah, it's kind of a nice way to do that. Uh, we're going to plop the the light panel in, and because I left this thing open, uh, I don't have to deal with all of this. Um, yeah, this is supposed to be screen, and then we're going to just scale it down. But as you can see, it's not going to fit. Well, I don't know if you can see it, but um, here it's not going to fit because if I align the outer edge, the inner edge will actually cross over the rest. So we're going to have to change our originals to change this. So we can of course change our first one. Uh, let me let me rename them a little bit. Um, so this is our uh, original square. It's just like white with a little black over it. Then number three here is going to be the small square. And that's the one we're going to edit. And then COM4 is um, the, that's this one, is uh, the light panel uh, rectangular, I guess. So yeah, we're going to edit the small square, not the original one, but we're going to edit this one. And once we edit this one, this one is going to be automatically edited. This one is going to be automatically edited and so we will be able to see the result in this one because that one will also be edited. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the S for scale. Uh, this, uh, well, this, this button for uh, constraint properties, well, we don't need that. We're going to put it a little bit smaller and then we can immediately see the result over here. It's a little bit too small. Let's uh, put it up a little bit. Something like that. Uh, it can still be a little bit bigger. So currently we're at 46. It can still be a little bit bigger. Something like that then. Okay, that's, uh, that's good enough. We can uh, scale the rest, I guess. Uh, so if we scale it up a little bit, I know it's, it's a little bit too big then. So let's... Um, Put it down a little bit, 65%. So yeah, now it fits perfectly. It has a little gap here, it has a little gap here, and it will look like this. So um, it will not rotate yet, but it will just sit there. So we can make it rotate if we want to by just doing the exact same thing. Hit the R for rotation, Alt click on the stopwatch, and then hit, if we want to rotate the same speed, hit the minus 50 times time and we're done. Well, we're, we don't want to make it rotate the same thing. We're going to ro let it rotate the other way. So plus 150. And by doing so, you will see that most of it turns left, but this thing turns right. It's a, it's a choice. You can make the choice yourself. I don't really mind if you do something else. Um, yeah, we're basically done with our, um, our design here. You can do a whole lot more things. Um, I have one more thing planned, but I will only be able to do that uh, in a moment. Well, once we're done, uh, I'm going to pull these ones out. Now that we've seen the design, I want this one, so comp one, to be the lines composition. And I don't want these in there because, well, then that kind of screws up my plan of having different elements in different comps because everything will be in here. So these are going to be deleted. I don't know why it doesn't allow me to delete them, but there you go. We're going to make a new composition and this one is going to be uh, 720 by, by 1280. And this one is going to become, be called the final, no, 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 not the final composition. Let's just make it composition, uh, design. It's not the final one because we will see that. Um, we are going to obviously put the lines in there. We're going to put the round uh, light panel in there and we're going to put the mid thing in there. And then we're going to scale the light panel to actually fit where it should be. I could have just remembered the name. Or the, the number, but yeah, kind of messed up there. So set this to screen. You can also set it behind the entire composition, then it won't be a problem either. Um, so yeah, right there. 
62%. Yeah, I knew that. So um, now that we're done here, we can uh, colorize it or we can do some more stuff to it. So for example, my light panel has four of these panels in it. But let's say we want to change, uh, uh, well, not make them uniform, kind of make them change over time and independent of each other. We go to our uh, rectangular light panel and because here we have four different instances, if we change something over here, then it will be applied to all of them at the same time. If we change it over here, it will be applied to all of them individually. And if we change it here, then it will once again be all at the same time because it's one layer. So we're going to change the opacity. We're going to just uh, make it wiggle for comma 50, which means that, oh, not the minus. So four times a second, it's going to change by a maximum, a random number with a maximum of 50. And since we're talking opacity here, it just looks at the color it is currently, which is all white. The maximum number of the white is 255, so it will change up to 50. So it's not going to be totally 50% uh, or something like that. It is going to be lower than that. But, uh, well, I can show you what it does. Here you can see it. This is apparently the second one. And you can see that it kind of flickers over time every now and then. So... This being done, we're going to go to Edit, Copy Expression Only, select all the other layers, well, except for the bottom one, Control V, and then it will automatically paste the expression in this one. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. There it is. So you can, of course, set different expressions for all of them, if you like that. So different uh, values or different um, blinking speeds would be kind of nice. And you can see that they all have different links. It's kind of nice and it will of course carry over to this one and that's the beauty of having different elements in different compositions. You can change them, you can also add multiples of something so if I wanted to do another uh, light panel I can actually import it and just say well I want this one to be I don't know um, super big or something like that. Uh, first of all set it to screen of course and then we're going to say, uh, yeah, we want this one to be super big. And of course it falls outside of the comp here, but that's really beside the point. And I can just um, just use it like that if I wanted to. It will also blink. It will in fact blink at the same uh, time as the other one. As you can see, they blink at the same time. And that might be what you're looking for. If it's not, you have to make a different uh, light panel. So the, just make a different copy of the light panel round comp and just, well, there you go. I mean, then there are two different instances and they will not blink at the same, uh, same time. So not, don't duplicate it here, but make a different comp out of it, different one of these. So I'm not going to do that, I'm going to be stuck with this and um, we're going to now put some effects on it to colorize it. So let's first start with, um, yes, curves is always a good start. So curves kind of allows you to, um, to change the overall look. Um, yeah, we're not going to put that directly on here though. I think we should be putting that on... Um, an adjustment layer. We're going to put the adjustment layer uh, underneath the light panel because that is going to be, get its separate color. So this one's going to be one color and then the rest is all going to share a color scheme and that color scheme is going to be determined by these curves. So you can uh, individually do the red, green and blue. So we're going to just uh, put up the red a little bit and turn down the green. I don't know. Um, and then the blue, we're going to turn that down as well. So it will become red. I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying something here. Maybe it becomes a very ugly color. We can always change it. I, uh, I don't really like red, to be honest. I'm more of a blue person. But uh, yeah, we can, we can make blue. So let's, uh, let's make it blue. But yeah, I'm just showing you that it ca you can actually change it. Let's get the green in there. Green should be interesting, makes it more of an 
yeah, that kind of color. I like that. If you don't like it, yeah, well, change it to something else. <laughs> it's all up to you. Well, if you um, uh, want the mid thing to have its own uh, layer, well, its own uh, curves, then you just, well, you basically put the curves on the lines then, but you just pull it outside of the adjustment layer. The adjustment layer will only affect layers underneath it, which means that if I put it over here, it will affect everything, and if I put it over here, it will only affect the lines, which is exactly what it's doing now. So let's um, let's do it like that. So let's um, put it over there, and then copy the curves to here. Uh, now it's the same color, but let's say we want it to be more blue. Uh, well, I guess I have to pull out the green then, because I was already pretty maxed out on blue. Um, let's make it that the red is a little bit more in there. I don't know. I'm just I'm just trying. I'm not really good with these color things, uh, not because I don't know how they work, but because I've basically never used them. I always use the RGB colors, which is not for this program, I guess. Um, blue, where are you? Let's see if we can uh, brighten it up. So yeah, okay, like that. And then let's uh, put a curves on this one as well, and make it a completely different color, like green. Like let's uh, let's make it bright green, pull out the blue, make it even brighter green, and definitely pull out the red. Yeah, the blue should be put in a little bit. Well, unless you like this color, I don't really see that difference. But uh, okay, I actually like that one. This is actually nice, huh? Um, yeah, I think I need this color for my um, for my mid thing. So just copy paste the curves. You can just do that, no problem. And um, I'm going to pull this one back then and uh, make it green, like I was intending to. So yeah, if you don't like the colors, make different colors. It's as easy as that. Uh, you can also do it like this. Uh, you can use tint and just say change the whites because we're it's all black and white to um, well something else and then the problem is it will actually show you well just plain colors it will not be as subtle as the other ones are but yeah I do like it that I can just pick the color here instead of uh, messing around with all this other crap so let's see we can still make it bright green apparently um, So yeah, you can also combine them, and um, yeah, that will make a little bit more green color. I um, I personally, yeah, this is just, or this is with both of them. This is with only tint, tint, sorry, and um, this is with only curves. So uh, there are diff definitely different strategies possible. Uh, if you like this, then yeah, just take that. Uh, I personally like this a little bit more. It has more white in it and less like saturated color and we're going to add glow for the saturated color anyway so yeah going to go there um, oh, I'm going to keep the tint maybe I can use it later so um, how glow works is once it reaches uh, the, the color reaches the glow threshold which is 60 percent of the maximum value it will go to a hundred percent and it will take uh, a radius of 10 with it so if you uh, yeah, if you up it, uh, if you up it, it becomes less because uh, the color being a hundred percent almost never happens, and the color of zero percent always happens. So this will be, well, more likely. So um, we're going to put that to a number that actually would make sense. Let's say currently we want that to be about here. I think now it will at least sometimes do something. Yeah, it's really slow on my computer because I have it to full. If I set it to quarter, we can see it. It's just not a. Uh, the effects are not that good, but you can see when the colors basically turn on. And um, I guess if I use the tint after this, it would actually be a cool effect. Or yeah, yeah. Let's let's try that. So if I use the tint after this, it will actually color this, but I would have to pick a little brighter color. It would look weird otherwise. So instead of being white, it now turns a different color. 
So you can you can use it as that as well. Now I'm not going to use that. I want them to be super bright. I'm also yeah once they're all on. So there is somewhere where they were all on here. Um, I can actually set the glow radius, and I'm going to put the glow radius to something like this, I guess. Uh, glow intensity, yeah, let's up that for when it actually blinks. Uh, it doesn't blink a whole lot. The radius needs to go down. It's too big. Something like this, then. Okay. Um, we can also say, yeah, this is all crap. The way this works is just crap. We're going to um, do that differently. We're going to take all three of these parameters, hit U, and then put them at zero. Well, you could have also set your uh, your timer here at zero, but well, I like to do things in the hard way, apparently, which is completely stupid. Um, anyhow. What we're going to do is we're going to make expressions for these. So alt click them. And oh not for this one. Uh, well it doesn't it doesn't actually matter, I guess. Uh, so we want the glow thresholds to uh, be affected by the glow intensity or the glow radius, it doesn't really matter. Uh, just set one or set them all to the other. And then we're going to have to do times something. Because this one, the glow intensity, only goes up to about 3.3. .3. That's the maximum we wanted. Whereas the glow thresholds, uh, oh, we never mind. The glow thresholds it should never be uh, should never be affected. Um, because well, we don't want all of the glow to happen all over the place. Uh, so we're going to put the expression on this one. Uh, Alt click. Oh, I have the intensity. That's cool too. So we're going to say glow radius, and then times, uh, sorry, divided by, well, that's about 10. So we're going to say divided by 10. And now uh, I could also do the glow threshold, by the way. Uh, it just means that more of it will actually start to blink. I think that's that's a good plan. That's, um, yeah, we're going to put this up a little bit. Hmm. It seems they're all glowing, but they shouldn't be. It's probably because this is too high. I don't know what's what's happening here. But the glow intensity is too high. So currently, if we modify our uh, glow radius, the glow intensity will also be edited, which was kind of what we were trying to do. And now we can set points for when we want the glow to happen. So if we can manually make glow happen now. So um, let's say we want glow to happen over here. So this one shouldn't be keyframed. It doesn't make sense. Uh, let's say we want glow to happen over here. Uh, we just say, or over here at half a second or just about, we just say to the glow radius, okay, make a point, then go two frames forward. That's one, that's two. And show us some uh, some glow, something like that. Extreme glow. And then we want to go back two frames afterwards to zero. Okay, so what that would look like is this. It would just blink and give us kind of a, a nice look. That's exactly what we want. So as I said, we can also edit the threshold to get more things to glow. But that's all up to you. So I can now just copy paste these points elsewhere. So let's say I want one over here and then I want one straight afterwards. So it's going to be a double blink, 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 very quickly behind each other. And then we're going to put some distance between them. We're going to do this for a couple of, uh, of seconds. Well, up to three seconds, I guess. It, it doesn't really matter. You can make it as long as you want. Um, yeah, okay. Let's uh, let's have this. This uh, seems about right. In the original example I made, I um, I used it three seconds. So now it looks like this. It um, it is random. Well, I distributed it randomly, but uh, you can make it as designed as you want. 
So um, yeah, nice flashes. You can also edit the values, of course, if you say like, no, I want this one to be super bright, then go ahead. And I want this one to be kind of an afterthought. And yeah, do that. It's all good. It's all up to you. And that is the beauty of designing this crap. You can do it all on your own. You can determine your own things and um, you can kind of say or make what you want to make. And yeah, this is why it might be, be nice to have the tint in there as well. Because instead of the white, it now becomes greener. And if we take a different green color, obviously it's going to get us a different uh, green glow as well. But yeah, this is a very ugly <laughs> green color for our design. Uh, we want something more like this, maybe. I don't know. Oh, it's, no, it's not turned on. I don't know. This seems very white. I don't know why it's so white, but um, apparently it uh, it just wants to be super white. Maybe I set the the deviation of these things a little bit too high, because the difference between this and this is just huge. This one is just pure white, and this one's not well, not at all white. But yeah, you can see here how that works. Um, it's all pretty nice. You can also say, by the way, that if you uh, you want your glow threshold to be uh, or to work as actual glow, then you can turn it up a little bit and just let it do its own thing. Because the glow, of course, does its own thing if left alone. But I didn't leave it alone. I made these uh, these flashes happen. Of course, you can do the flashes in several different ways. You can also use uh, lens flares or something like that. It's all well. You can you can do all sorts of things with it. It's uh, it's pretty cute. So um, last thing I wanted to add. I, I don't know if it's actually the last thing, but uh, I do want to add it. Import file, logo. Uh, another logo. Yeah, I know. I have so many logos. No, I just made this one for uh, for this tutorial. Um, I'm going to set it to full. I'm not done yet. I just realized that. Well, there's a lot of things you can actually do with this. I'm going to put this on the sphere. Use the arrow keys to kind of maneuver it around. That seems about right. And now it it won't spin. I'm just saying it won't spin. So if we want this to spin, the mid part, by the way, doesn't spin at all. Uh, if we want this to spin, we have to once again go to Rotation, uh, just Alt-click the stopwatch and go to type it in. So let's say we want um, uh, 100 times time. So it's a lot slower than the other one, or the other ones, and it rotates the other direction. So uh, yeah. It's all up to you. Uh, apparently, my light panel isn't rotating either, so let's uh, let's make that happen. This one is going to be 150 times time. And by the way, if you're not satisfied with the uh, with the rotation of one of your elements, so you made a rotation in your original thing here, and you're not satisfied, then you can actually just change it here as well because it will just take both of the expressions so if I do uh, if I take the lines which is currently rotating at 150 uh, times time or minus 150 times time and I pull up the rotation here there's no expression so if I add an expression that says plus 150 times time it will actually stand still if everything goes well and there you see it, except for the outer ring, because we changed the speed on that one, if you remember that. So um, I'm not going to do that, because, well, standing still is boring. We want everything to rotate. The entire world should rotate. Oh, wait, it does. So, um, yeah, it's um, kind of nice, all of these, these little rotations, all of these uh, things you can do with it. And now all we need to do is make it into the final composition and arrange them the way we want and we can change the colors things like that 
Um, I had one more thing planned. Yeah, I wanted to do that really at the end of everything. So now that we have everything done, we can actually do this. We're going to duplicate the lines and well, the fact that it's underneath everything is kind of nice because we need it to be there. Um, we're going to do a radial blur, I think it's called. Yeah, there it is. CC radial blur, that's the newer one of the two, so let's use that one. Uh, what this does is, um, well, this. Uh, hang on, not scratch, we want to have fading zoom. Uh, let's drag this out and hopefully my computer will actually accept the fact that I'm trying to do this. Yeah, it is supposed to be fading. I think it's too much. Eh. Well, oh, this one needs to be set to screen. Everything needs to be set to screen. Otherwise I can't see what's underneath it. Um, so, screen. Where are you? Here. So hopefully I will actually be able to see it now. If I change it. There you go. Look at that. It becomes kind of a backlight. And you can of course change the colors because you can change anything. Um, let's make it into... Oh, hang on. That's, that's because of the adjustment layer, of course. We can just copy paste this uh, or cut and paste this one over here. And now it's white. I'm going to delete this adjustment layer. Um, yeah, you can change this because we do have another curves setting. Uh, you can put it above or below. It doesn't matter that much, I think. Oh, it does matter. Yeah. So here it will paint with the colors that are actually on this layer because we're using the same setup as the line setup. And then here it will make the colors all blue. So yeah, it's kind of nice. Both of them are kind of nice. I think I'm going to use this one though. Make it a little bit brighter if we can. Um, yeah, probably by fading less. So I'm making this 60. No, I like the 75. Let's, uh, do we have something? No, quality seems to be fine at 50. Um, yeah, this seems to be fine. There is no other way to, uh, to increase that other than, I guess, duplicating the layer. That would increase it probably. Hang on, does it? No, it doesn't. Huh. That is funny. Most of the layers will, uh, will increase in intensity if you do that. But yeah, this seems fine. So um, I now have kind of a white bluish glow. But well, as I said, you can also reverse them and get a different color. So yeah, the blue, I think it's uh, it's nice as well. And if we now play it, oh, let's, um, let's not select anything. If we now play it, it's going to take a while, but uh, we're, it's loading it in. So yeah, once we're done with the, the loads, we can actually see it at almost normal speed and we can see our end result. This, by the way, the, the radial blur thing is really intense for your, uh, for your computing. So yeah, that's why it's taking so long. So if you turn that off, then it will go a lot smoother. The thing is, it is a nice effect. So you can add more stuff around it. You can have all kinds of circular effects, like uh, shock waves or um, things like that. You can add those around it. It would look pretty nice. You can also do some uh, some music action. There you go. That's what it looks like, at least the first bit. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's see it again. So yeah, um, if that's what you're looking for, so uh, then. You're basically done. If you don't think this is designed enough, like you want more, then you can actually just do more. You can um, make a new composition. Well, we wanted to do that anyway. Final design. And this is going to just incorporate our design and then just say, hit the S for scale. We're going to put that in here 
and we're going to put multiples in here. So you should check this box. Uh, it makes sure that everything is calculated correctly. Uh, even though it's on, all, uh, already rendered in this one, it's still going to get uh, recalculated over here. And that is just for better results. So um, let's um, do this one and then duplicate it and put one over there. Oh, I guess we can center them, but yeah, whatever. So yeah, currently they rotate the same direction and uh, everything. And um, yeah, you can of course reverse that by uh, rotating it 180 degrees in Y direction, but you have to first put it like this. So now you, you, you make it a 3D layer, you rotate it 180 degrees. The only thing is, so now we'll rotate the other way. Um, if that will actually like to work. Why isn't this work? This should work. I don't know why it's uh, why it's not, but apparently it doesn't allow me to uh, to rotate it. I tried it out earlier and then it worked fine. So I don't know why it's not doing it now. But yeah, um, you can rotate it the other way. You can also time reverse the layer, I guess. Um, yeah, let's not make it a 3D layer then. You should be able to time reverse it. Uh, let's see, time, time reverse layer. And that would be rotating it the other way. There you go. See, now you can see that it actually rotates the other way. Let's put this to quarter so it can actually show you stuff. Yeah, now it's rotating the other way. Uh, if you want the same flashes and such that you made, you have to drag this over until you hit something like three seconds. Yeah, there's a flash, so I guess four seconds. So now the flashes are going to be at different uh, positions and it's rotating the other way. Yeah, cool. So um, yeah, if that's what you desire, like having just different positions, that's cool. Oh, well, this is what you want to do. If you're saying like, nah, I want more, man. I want the different colors as well. Hit the tint, make it black and white again, because that's what tint does normally. It replaces um, the, yeah, it replaces everything with the original black and white, basically, because it just removes the color. And then we're going to go to curves. Uh, you can also do curves straight away. It's just uh, it's a little bit messier. You want to tint first, then curves. And let's say we wanted this to be red. There you go. Red it is. The thing is, of course, now you can only uh, get one color on here. Uh, you can't do multiple colors because everything is now in one layer. And you can only color the layer. If you're saying, well, I really, really, really want that... Uh, that mid thing to be different, then just go to your uh, design, I think. Yeah, just uh, copy this one and paste it in here. Scale it to the same amount, of course, because we do want that to the same amount. So 62% times 63%, that is uh, what you need. I'm just going to do it by guessing. Um, yeah, just uh, put it in there and um, I'm just going to place it like this. Uh, let's take another frame because this is kind of messy. So yeah, we're replacing this, this one by the other one. Uh, you might want to change the rotation as well, the rotation direction as well. But as you might have noticed, now we have see-through layers, which can be a really cool effect. But if you don't want that, just mask it out. Just go to your design. So that's the right one in this case. Hit the, uh, the, 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 the ellipse tool here and just go with this. This is, by the way, control shift. Uh, yeah, mask it out. Just say subtract. Uh, see, subtract. And then take a second mask. Say midpoint, control shift, and say add. Well, it will automatically say add. And if you line it up correctly, I will show it at full. It will, um, hopefully, yeah, there it is. 
it will uh, get you all of the things that you wanted like yeah that's that's as easy as it is you can just make it as you wish so this one let's um, let's put it in the correct way it's to be a little bit bigger for everything to get in there but yeah you get the point you uh, you just cut out the piece so if I uh, if I put this off you just cut out the piece that you don't want and you cut exactly around these layers and then you put in the new one where the old one kind of had that part so it's as easy as that you can just cut out pieces of your eventual design even so um, it's really easy as I said many times before you need to learn how these things work you, you don't need to learn how to do this thing you need to understand how the principle works of masking and of uh, interchanging things and god knows what else uh, so yeah and once you're done with that so once you have like your thing you just um, make your composition as long as you want so in this case that would be four seconds go to composition composition settings set it to four seconds and um, just say okay render oh it's a little bit too much just uh, go to composition make movie and you can render it out that's all there's to it we're not done yet though because well if we want these things to work the way they're supposed to we want them to also come in and get out when they're supposed to so first of all we're going to show that with the first one so the first one is already available at second zero which doesn't make sense it needs to come in from somewhere so we're going to do that very easily we're going to use scaling for that so uh, currently at 63 percent uh, we're going to set it to zero and over the first uh, little bit it's going to come in 63 percent which means that now it looks like this it will come in slowly and obviously it will take a long time to render so long yeah, you can also, by the way, render out your um, your original design. So this one, you can render that to a QuickTime movie and then import the QuickTime movie for your final design. That would be fine as well. It's just that, yeah, you won't be able to uh, change too much. Well, you will still be able to change the color and things like that, but you won't be able to take out parts and things like that. Um, you will be able to cut out a hole and put something else in it though. So it may actually be a very good way if you're trying to make something really good. Uh, so it may actually be better than what I'm doing currently. So these two, you can either make them have the same scale points or you can pre-compose them into a new composition and then import the composition. Well, it will be automatically imported into this one and just have one scale point. For now, I'm just going to copy these scale points. So copy, hit these two, hit S, and then just paste them back in there you go so currently they just have the same scale points and um, that would be good if the the scaling was actually the same 39 percent for that one okay so this one needs to be 39 at maximum there you go now they come in at the same time you can of course make them come in at different times um, so many possibilities with these kinds of effects it's it's really incredible how much you can do with very very simple effects if only you want to invest the time to actually make it and um, yeah we can actually make a background as well because we don't have a background yet I don't think we yeah we have this as a background which is kind of terrible it uh, it looks cool on a black background it would have been nice to have it on something like this though um, yeah let's make a new layer so new solid uh, yeah because you have a nice effect called uh, no it's generate I think four color gradient and yes this looks terrible as a background but if you go to like the bluish colors and, um, and you turn it into something like this this is a fine color just pick four colors that are well, not completely the same at least. Um, 
and then you get something like this and you can darken it a little bit of course by uh, putting up the curves so if you put a curves in there and just uh, drag it down you can actually darken it a little bit and the lights will actually interact so the because it's all set to screen the the things will interact with the background and currently they won't do that because well there's black underneath it um, actually I'm not sure if it does that no because it doesn't seem to be black it seems to be greenish let's uh, let's pull the curves up and we can actually see what's happening no so it does disappear once you put a normal layer underneath it so yeah that is cool you can uh, you can make these kind of backgrounds and just uh, well let them float in from uh, yeah on, on a non-black background and yeah the the things do interact with the background so uh, if you make it correctly then you can so if you design the colors correctly which I obviously didn't uh, you can actually get some really nice stuff going on by the interaction with the background and the foreground and just all nice color combinations but yeah for now you know how the effect works and um, that's um, all I wanted to show you uh, let's let's do a little bit more I know this is getting out of hand man I always do this so uh, let's take one of the designs put the bulge on there and bulge is just uh, one of those effects that are really like <laughs> yeah who, who the hell uses those but yeah um, we're going to I don't know where it is. Oh, it's it's all the way over there. Okay, we're going to just set the the radius uh, to I don't know something like that, and then something like this, and then we're going to say like if we change this, yeah, you can see what it does. So we can make this uh, change over time. So if it's one, I believe it's normal. No, it's still not normal. What's what's the normal? Here is normal. Zero is normal. Okay. So if we start off with zero, and then well, we let it come in at zero. Uh, I don't think you can. You will actually notice that. Oh, it scales with it. That is nice because it's on the layer. Yeah. Duh. Um. Yeah, we're going to do that at from from one second. Page up, page down. Let you scroll a little easier. Uh, yeah, let's just set this to quarter so that we don't have to deal with it too much. Uh, we're going to set the bulge height to something else, so we're going to keyframe that. Hit the U, and there it is. Uh, so from here until, let's say, 5. Let's, uh, let's put it up really small. And yeah, it's not big enough here, but you get the concept. And then to 10, and at 10 we're going to go back to 0. And maybe we're going to do that again over here. And then the other way around, or the, the other way. So 2 seconds we're going to say, well, this middle point is going to be plus 1.6, 1, 1, 6, I should say. And it's going to go the other way. Oh, I changed all three of them. That is messy. Yeah, that's what you get. Now let's copy this one, paste it in this one. So here it becomes smaller, and then here it becomes bigger. The timing, of course, all depends on what you're planning to do. Um, I do recommend that you do set this. Um, this radius correctly. So it seems 250 is the radius to go. A little bit bigger in fact, 255. 255. There you go. So now we have an effect over there that actually changes the entire thing. Like, so cool. You you have so many of these these little effects that you can use to well increase the powerfulness of your uh, of your thing of your uh, whatever you're trying to build. Uh, we're going to do this on this one as well. 
Oh. Hang on. What did I do? I pasted it somewhere, but not here. Hmm. Yeah, the the size it seems is not uh, the same for this one. I don't know why it changed that, but uh, okay. We'll just change it with it. So I don't know why it didn't just. You know, I wasn't able to just copy paste it. Um, hit U on this one, and then we can actually copy all of these to this belch right or did it already do that for me yes it did it's not at the right spot but it all depends if you want it over there that's fine too of course but I don't and I'm going to delete them and put them like here now we have the one doing it then the other and the one and then the other yeah the the middle thing or the uh, light panel didn't actually get copied with it because well I didn't make them into a pre-comp I should have made them into a pre-comp and then everything would have been fine so let's change it, or put it over here as well uh, paste and now it's like super small of course because yeah that would be logical right it wouldn't it wouldn't want to actually help me at all um nope just the size up the size up doesn't really have to be as large i don't think it actually matters Apparently it does matter. Um, yeah, so the size has to be the same as with the other one, I guess. Nope, it has to be way bigger. Uh, something like this. Okay, um, so yeah, it's not perfect because I should have pre-composed them and that would have been uh, the easy way to do it. Because now I get this gap between them and that wouldn't have happened. I don't know why my ring isn't actually using the bulge. It does have the keyframes. And oh, it's still zero. That's why. So, even though it did copy the keyframes, it didn't actually do anything at the keyframes. And once again, I do not know why. That's the way it is sometimes, and you're going to have to fix it yourself. There you go. Now it's all good. It's it's not though. Why is it now? keeping that value. Are you kidding me with this? I have all these values and it just changes all of them at the same time for some reason. And now I can't access any of them. What is going on? Anyway, I'll fix it, but um, I'll leave you to it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something, and I will see you next time.